A scorching summer pattern continuing for many, but some relief in sight as a strong storm system will push through, bringing severe storms for some, while to the south, potential tropical trouble may be brewing down in the Gulf. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this uh, wonderful Friday at the end of the work week, and hopefully we are enjoying uh, that uh, kind of last day or so of the week and almost the last day of the month here. We're starting to knock on the doorsteps of July, 4th of July, only a week from today. So we'll get an early look at that forecast and also uh, hurricane season trying to pretend like it wants to do something at least right now in the Gulf. We'll talk about that and then also potential of maybe something off the Atlantic coast uh, by the time we get a little bit further out into time. I told you yesterday, I don't see any big impacts up to the 4th of July. I'm still maintaining that forecast. Um, at least for the United States, but uh, again, there are a couple areas that we will definitely touch on. The flip side of that, severe weather, summer heat, and maybe some relief on the way will be another big topic in today's video. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications uh, so you're up to date again, especially with the tropics trying to maybe at least act like it uh, wants to pretend it's hurricane season. I uh, definitely want to stay up to date with anything that happens there. Again, it can change quick here in the Atlantic. We know that uh, from the past, so always good to just have the latest information. All right, let's start talking weather here with our uh, updated satellite loop. And you can see um, where we had this big ridge not long ago. It's kind of hard to pick out now. We've got this little southern piece of energy uh, kind of parked over the southeast right now. That has helped to uh, increase moisture values, increase afternoon thunderstorm potential compared to what we saw maybe earlier this week. But ever since Wednesday, uh, the thunderstorms in the afternoon have been a little bit more widespread, which has been good. It has helped to keep the temperatures down somewhat. Uh, at least for some of us. Now, not everyone obviously getting those afternoon storms um, as is typical in the summertime, but we do have uh, some new energy that's going to try to work on in and maybe clear us out a little bit depending on where you're watching from. We got one piece up here in the Great Lakes currently and then another piece back towards the Northern Rockies. That's going to be the main piece of energy uh, that could promote a bit of a stronger storm by the time we get to uh, the end of this weekend and early next week. But for now, still just a big shield of mugginess. And you can see peeking its ugly head down here at the bottom. I know it's uh, way at the bottom. We're going to zoom in here later on in the video. Potentially something in the tropics trying to get going. Uh, not uh, super high on its chances, but again, we will definitely take a look at it here coming up in a moment. Before we do that, let's take a look at radar out there and uh, yeah, it kind of matches what we're seeing in the satellite loop. We do have some rain along uh, where the general idea of that ridge is. Like I said, we do have a storm system up into the Great Lakes currently. You can see that pretty well, bringing some pretty good rain here into southern Ontario. Going to start to work into Quebec throughout the day today and into tomorrow. And then on the outside of the ridge here, again, just some uh, more uh, convective storms that are trying to pop up. And by the time we get to this afternoon, I can almost guarantee you we're going to have pretty widespread afternoon thunderstorms down into the southeast. So nothing really atypical for the end of June. In fact, I would argue that this is pretty normal for this time of year. All right, let's go ahead and now take a look at some upper level maps and start to kind of figure out what's going to happen this weekend and how that could affect the severe weather potential where you're watching from. Luckily, I think the worst of this heat wave is over for most of us. Here's why that big ridge we had a couple days ago, if you've been tuning in regularly, you'll remember that big orange blob in the east uh, starting to wither away a little bit and really become a shell of itself. And we're now turning to more of a zonal flow for many of us. Uh, basically, that means instead of this big ridge of high pressure, now most of the upper level winds are just uh, flat out west to east across much of the country, bringing uh, more typical weather for the end of June. And again, it's still hot. You would expect that here in the summer months. Uh, still have afternoon storms. You would also expect that, uh, but not record shattering heat like we had earlier this week, especially Tuesday and Wednesday were uh, the big days for many of us across the country. Now, uh, timing this out though, uh, like I said, we've got little pieces of energy. Here's that Great Lakes piece of energy. You can see a little trough here. Uh, helping to create some surface low pressure. Behind it, a more well-pronounced trough, uh, a bigger, larger trough. That's going to be the next big piece of energy, I think, that could potentially get a front that tries to drag really through much of the eastern U.S. and not just the northern tier. Let's time it out for you here. Uh, you can see here it comes, starts to dip down south. This is by Monday into Tuesday into Wednesday of next week, and then even gets kind of a reinforcing shot of energy by about Wednesday, Thursday. So we'll watch for that. That could help to bring some relief, I think, especially for the Northeast. Um, if we're down further south, it's going to be a little bit tougher. It's tougher to get those fronts to be quite as strong once you get down uh, into the Southeast. And oftentimes they struggle to cross all the way through the country. Uh, but that's going to be the main driver of our next weather system in terms of severe weather uh, as well will be that storm. So let's time it out for you. 
Here's today's uh, threat area, and again, it kind of lines up pretty well. We've got uh, that area with the first storm over the Great Lakes. We've got a little slight risk up into Detroit, uh, even uh, back over towards Flint and uh, Sterling Heights, just kind of that general area of Michigan. And then again, anyone in the southeast, a strong afternoon storm, typical summertime stuff here, not out of the question. A more organized severe weather threat, though, developing back into the plains with that more powerful upper-level piece of energy. You can even see that today here with our tornado threat. Really nothing in the east, although don't completely rule it out in Michigan. A quick spin-up. We've got a little bit more spin there close to that surface low, but easily the highest tornado threat today going to be north and south Dakota, right through the heart of those states. Uh, heck, even getting all the way down towards Nebraska. Uh, now, that's today. Taking a look at tomorrow. Um we're going to do it all again. Again, the Great Lakes piece of energy, it's going to push east. We've got a little marginal risk associated with that one, but a bigger threat area back into the northern plains once again for your Saturday tornado threat tomorrow. Um, going to be pretty low for most of us, but again, the northern plains, specifically northern Minnesota, northwestern Wisconsin could see a couple brief tornadoes with that storm system. And that gets us into the end of the weekend, Sunday. And uh, at that point, it's really just that main storm system working through that'll be the big storyline, severe weather-wise. Although, again, you can never completely rule out a strong storm in the afternoon, even in the southeast. You're just not going to get the tornadoes, and the hail will be smaller, but you could still definitely get gusty winds. And I think that'll be the biggest threat across the board uh, for anybody that was shaded in on any of those maps. All right, let's take a look now at uh, some mesoscale data, and then uh, we'll keep on tracking along, talking about this uh, storm system coming up. And then let's take a look at the tropics, where again, we could potentially have some trouble brewing. All right, so we're going to just zoom things out today. We're missing some of our uh, very zoomed in mesoscale data. So we're going to just, again, kind of pull it out a little bit, take a look at the NAM model, kind of breeze through the next couple of days, and then really focus on uh, that next storm system this weekend. So here we go. Uh, this afternoon, like I said, we've got that storm system up into the Great Lakes. We could see some rain associated with that really anywhere to the southeast, but highest severe weather threat with that one will be uh, up into uh, the areas of Michigan that we mentioned. Now, outside of that, uh, again, the Northern Plains is going to be the real focal point for severe weather. I know it's hard to see here, but a couple supercells could try to fire this evening back out that way associated with that other piece of energy back into the Rockies that we've already discussed. That's today. Uh, let's uh, zoom this on out towards tomorrow now for your Saturday. And notice uh, surface low pressure really beginning to develop a little bit more out here into the plains. That's that next storm system, the surface of the low, actually up into the prairies of Canada. But again, that uh, front associated with it will be all the way far south in the east enough uh, that we could get severe weather into Minnesota. Uh, the Dakotas there and uh, potentially even back into portions of Nebraska, Iowa, and Wisconsin. Now, as that's happening, our other surface low into portions of Quebec, uh, moving up towards the St. Lawrence River Valley, producing some rain in the northeast again. A couple isolated severe storms there on uh, Saturday as well uh, as that works on through. And then again, the southeast, same old, same old. A couple afternoon storms uh, isolated to scattered in nature, some of which will become strong to severe. The typical summertime spiel uh, that you probably hear all the time. Uh, that's your Saturday. What about Sunday? Well, here comes Sunday. And uh, notice rain chances again increasing for some of us as this surface low begins to strengthen up here into Canada. There it is. And we're going to need to watch again how far south and east can the front associated with it get. Because if you can get it to pass through uh, and in a good enough way, you could get a nice uh, relief from some of the humidity. And you can see as that happens here. Uh, again, it's not the most impressive storm, and where it is most impressive, it's all the way up near the Hudson Bay. So uh, I don't think that cold front's going to get super far south, but I think it'll be strong enough that some of us will get some relief. Before we show you that relief, though, let's take a look at the supercell composite. Again, who has the highest chance of severe weather? Uh, yeah, exactly who I told you. Back up into the northern plains. Again, don't uh, sleep on your areas of uh, Ontario and Michigan today. Uh, cannot rule out a couple strong storms there, but the Northern Plains is going to have the highest chance of those powerful storms. Um, again, this is your Saturday forecast. Here's your Sunday, or excuse me, that was your Friday. This is your Saturday forecast. And then we get on into your Sunday. And then by Sunday, the storm starts to lose some steam, but still producing some strong to severe weather. Now, let's take a look at, again, that potential relief. Here it is in the upper levels. We talked about this a little bit. Here's a different map showing it. Here's the storm getting going. This is overnight Monday, and anywhere that this dip goes through will likely get some relief uh, in terms of temperatures, but especially in terms of that muggy meter. We're going to bring things back down to reality a little bit and kind of bring a little bit of cooler Canadian air in. 
um, not fall like weather per se, but uh, better than what we've seen for sure uh, out of this very summertime pattern. You can see that even clips through the Northeast, um, it tries to get it into the mid Atlantic. I think the real battleground zone on where we're going to get uh, relief to your north and kind of still very muggy where you're at is going to be right in that area. Um, I think uh, definitely the Northeast will get some relief. It's going to be a tougher ask further south into the Carolinas and Virginia. Uh, we'll see what happens though. Again, just kind of have to keep analyzing the data day by day. Uh, and then here comes another piece of energy. That one could definitely do something as well as significance that we'll need to watch out for. Now, another thing I want you to keep an eye on here is as all this energy keeps diving south, uh, notice by about the 4th or so of July, again, next week, we've got some energy down here to the south kind of uh, on the tail end of this front. That'll be important for our tropics discussion in a second. So just remember that area. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a moment. I uh, already uh, showed you that. So let's take a look now at that uh, relief potential with this. Again, a line of storms probably going to work through with it. Uh, here it comes. This is by uh, Monday into Tuesday. Notice, again, not perfect by Wednesday afternoon here, but some relief. Uh, dew point values back down into the lower 60s compared to the mid to even upper 70s that we have seen for a lot of us. Um, so I would still consider that relief. How far south and east does it get? This model, the European tries to get it even down into Virginia and the Carolinas. Again, not pleasant outside per se, but better than it has been. The core of that relief, though, uh, going to be right up here in the northeast and up into eastern Canada. Check that out. Dew points down into the 40s and 50s for New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, portions of Maine, even back down potentially as far south as um, portions of Connecticut and Massachusetts there. Now, that's almost more fall-like air. Uh, compared to what's still going to be muggy relatively south, but could be nicer than maybe it is out there right now. All right, let's take a look now at the tropics. Again, we've got a couple areas to watch. Let's give you the latest on that. All right, well, here it is. This is what's going to try to take the B name. And like I said in yesterday's video, I'm not backtracking on the forecast of nothing major happening. I really don't think that this will be a big deal. Definitely not for the United States and even the next storm, probably not either. Uh, but it is worth talking about. We've got this big complex of storms developing down towards the Yucatan, and uh, that could eventually cross the Yucatan, get into the Bay of Campeche, and potentially try to develop into something. Now, taking a look at it on satellite, I'll be honest, pretty impressive looking little system here. Um, now, again, this is not having rotation all the way down to the surface. In the mid-levels, it's got some spin. It looks pretty on satellite. Uh, but even with all that said, the National Hurricane Center only given this guy a small 20% chance of developing. And if you want, you can pause the video here and read all that. Basically, though, again, just a disorganized areas of uh, area of showers and storms. Going to cross the Yucatan, get into the Bay of Campeche, and likely eventually move right back into Mexico. So even if this does take the B name, we're very unlikely to get a hurricane out of this. Maybe a tropical storm could be possible. Uh, we do a very warm ocean temperatures down here, but time is going to be the biggest enemy of this storm. You can see that here on our future track ensemble spaghetti plots. Yeah, that time they were already taking a look at spaghetti, right? Uh, this is from the GFS ensembles. Again, it shows low pressure developing, but really not a whole lot to write home about. Probably not even a named storm there on the ensembles. And again, you can see why the track of this thing just does not have a lot of time. Now, I will say, if um, we get this big blow of a convection on the north side like it has right now, that could tug this thing north a little bit. And if that were to happen, it would get more time over the bay there of Campeche. So that could maybe give it a higher chance of developing. We'll watch it. I'll keep you updated. Again, that's the GFS ensembles. The European ensembles, a little bit more bullish. Again, they've got a couple stronger members in here uh, compared to the GFS. And you can see why. Again, it's a little bit further north on the track. It's got more time over the bay there. So we'll watch that and see what comes of it. But the other thing to watch, and again, there's only one area from the National Hurricane Center right now, but uh, you see how we start to get some of these little areas to develop on the European ensembles? That's now through, again, the 4th of July. I told you that would be the time period. I think we're quiet. After that, though, uh, watch what happens as we move this out to 10 days from now. We start to get some members here trying to get something going off the Carolina coastline and, uh, you know, a couple stronger members even. So, We'll watch it. That could be some leftover energy from that front swinging on through that could bring some relief. We'll see if maybe it gets some spin there on the south side, tries to get something cranking here and, uh, you know, maybe tries to get that going. But um, either way, it would likely be pulling away from land. We've got plenty of time to watch it, though. If it does develop, probably won't even start that process for another week or so. So plenty of time to watch it and discuss it. Again, still not seeing any major threats to the United States here in the tropics. All right, folks, well, that's all I got for you on this Friday. Um, 
Yeah, I will add here, uh, tomorrow is my debut on air at, uh, well, I guess not technically for WCCB Charlotte, but uh, at our sister station, WOLO, uh, ABC Columbia. So if you live in the Midlands of South Carolina or you just want to tune in on their app, uh, I will be on TV tomorrow night at 11 and then in Charlotte and Columbia on Sunday, uh, Charlotte at 6 and 10 and uh, Columbia once again at 11. And from there on out, the weekends uh, will have me on air. So exciting stuff there. Uh, hopefully you'll tune in if you're locally. And if you're not, then you know that's fine. I totally get it. But again, you can always watch in the app as well uh, if you'd like to see that. All right. Y'all have a great one. Stay safe out there and I'll see you all tomorrow.